Uh, we're talking about fantastic families, awesome relationships. Um, and John spoke about families last week, um, and we're hitting it again this week. Uh, why? Because it's really important, right? Uh, we all have families, uh, whether you're, you know, single or a young adult or a teenager or, uh, you know, anywhere in that, you've got a family. Um, and that's my nose. Um, there are a few things that kind of set awesome families apart from average families. Um, and the first one we all agree with, and so I'm going to hit it because it's important, but then I'm going to move on. Uh, because I think most of us would agree and say, yes, okay, we get that point, let's move on to something else. Uh, and, and the first thing when we think through what goes into an awesome family, it's got to be built on God, right? Okay, awesome families, their foundation is centered around Christ, okay? I, I think we all get that, right? Um, I'm not hearing a lot of protesting. Uh, we understand that, okay? If you want an awesome family, you better be centering it around God. I'm just going to pull out one scripture to kind of, uh, if you're doubting, if you're not sure if that's true, I'm just going to give you one scripture to kind of prove it to you, and then I'll move on to something else, okay? So stick with me here. I'm in Matthew chapter 7. Awesome families are built on God. These are the words of Jesus. Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Okay, there you go. It's outlined, right? If you want an awesome family, you better build it around God. And no matter what else you do, you, you can go to the best counselors, you can uh, work the hardest at parenting right and having a good marriage and, and being healthy in your family. If it's not centered around God, you're wasting your time because you're building a mansion on sand. And so let's get that out of the way from the beginning, okay? We've all got to start from this square one. If, if your family is not focused on God, then you're in trouble, and you do not have an awesome family. Sorry to be frank and brutal, but that's the words of Jesus. Okay, so moving on to something else. The next thing that is scripturally recommended for having an awesome family is that awesome families encourage growth in each other. Awesome families push each other, stretch each other. Awesome families are not content with people in their family staying stagnant, staying where they are. And this is what separates awesome families from just average families, is that you're focused on God and you encourage growth in each other. Now what, what do I mean by that? Because I think we all kind of agree with that too, right? Yeah, I want my kids, I want my spouse to, to grow mentally. I, I want them to grow spiritually. If they're kids, I want them to grow physically, healthy, okay? But what do, what do I mean by encourage growth? This is what I mean. Awesome families act like rain jackets. What does a rain jacket do? Keeps you dry, keeps you warm, gives you a sense of safety, right? Awesome families act like rain jackets. But if I were in my apartment and I looked outside my window and it was raining, which is rare, but, and it was raining, I go, oh, it's raining, I better go get my rain jacket. And then I put my rain jacket on and I sat down on the couch and watched TV all day. That rain jacket's really kind of useless, right? 
And if you walked into my living room and saw me sitting on the couch in a rain jacket, and go, why are you wearing a rain jacket? It's like, well, because it's raining. Bro, We get that a rain jacket is really only useful if you're in the storm. Right? You don't need a rain jacket inside unless you've got a bad roof. Rain jackets are useful when you are in the storm. Awesome families act like a rain jacket. Inherently, what is implied in that is that, look, we as awesome families need to be pushing each other out into the storms of life. Now, there's a responsible way to do that. I'm not saying throw your kids to the wolves. What I am saying is that God calls us into the storms of this world. Awesome families don't hide from that. They act like rain jackets in those storms. They provide the love and support needed to give me the confidence to walk into a storm. Because when I walk into a storm without a rain jacket, I'm not very confident. I'm nervous. I'm scared because I'm going to get soaking wet and I don't know how it's going to turn out. But with a rain jacket, I can walk into a storm with a certain level of confidence because I've got safety. I've got an ability to stay dry and warm. Awesome families don't hinder me from going into the storms. They provide the love and support I need to walk confidently through the storms of life. That's, that's what awesome families do. They encourage growth by acting like a rain jacket. And you may be asking, okay, well, why can't I just stay in my apartment? Why can't I just keep my family in my house, out of the storm? Because that's even better than a rain jacket, right? Then you don't even need a rain jacket. You just wear whatever you want because you're inside and you're warm and you're safe and you're comfortable. There's a reason why we can't stay out of the storms. And I'm going to point you back to Matthew chapter 7, the verse I just read five minutes ago. What does Jesus say the difference is between a wise and a foolish man? It's where they build, right? But the, the common thread with the wise and the foolish man is what? They both get hit by a storm. And inherently, you see through all scripture, look, you can fool yourself into thinking you can hide your family in your house and avoid storms, but that is not reality. No matter how good you are at sheltering, protecting, shielding, you will not be able to keep your spouse from experiencing storms. You will not be able to keep your kids from experiencing storms. You will not be able to keep your parents from experiencing storms. And so this is the lie in our culture today that I think Satan has tempted us with. Is that, look, if, if you make enough money, if you spend enough time, if you are a healthy enough parent, you can avoid the storms. And Satan convinces us that we need to just hunker down, build bigger houses to protect ourselves from the storms, make ourselves feel more comfortable. And when we do that, why would Satan want us to do that? When we do that, we cripple each other in our abilities to handle storms because I've never had to deal with a storm because my parents have already sheltered and shielded me from every storm in life and so all of a sudden when a storm gets through I have no idea how to handle it and I don't have a rain jacket to hold because my family's not acting like a rain jacket my family's acting like a storm shelter and at certain points I gotta leave that shelter Satan comes and he says look you can avoid the storms. Don't listen to Jesus. Don't listen to God. Don't listen to wise people. You can avoid the storms altogether. And when we do that, we don't, we don't grow. When I stay in my apartment, I stay stagnant. I don't stretch. I don't grow. And then I 
I really am in trouble when a storm comes because I'm not prepared for it. I haven't had to deal with it before. That's what Satan wants. That's what Christ doesn't want. That's what separates awesome families from average families is that, look, we encourage growth in each other by acting like rain jackets. And we cannot protect each other from every storm that comes at us in life. And this is, this is the tension. Because there's really two options here that were presented. Now, are, are we basically, it boils down to, are we going to be families living in fear? Or families living in faith? Because faith allows me to go into the storms. Fear keeps me and all my loved ones in a stagnant, safe, warm place that's not necessarily healthy. Fear keeps me out of the storms. Faith enables me to encourage my family members out into the storms that God might be calling us into and act like a rain jacket for them. The, the, the question is, is my life, is my family characterized more by fear or faith? 1 John 4.18. Forgot to mark it. 1 John 4.18, you've heard this before. It deals with this tension of fear and faith. It says this. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. You can't love and fear at the same time. And so when we are families of fear, we are not loving each other. When we are families of fear, we are not living in faith. And so the question is, are you a family of fear or faith? And we see Jesus do this with his own disciples, his, his family in ministry. Over and over again, right? Jesus is out on a hillside teaching, and it's getting late. And there are about 5,000 men there, plus women and children. And the disciples start to realize, oh, a storm's coming. Be why? Because all these people need to eat. We're too far from town. How are we going to feed these people? And Jesus, in that moment, doesn't go, it's okay, I'll keep you safe. I'll shield you from the storm. I'll feed, I'll feed everybody. What does he do? He says, you feed them. He calls them into the storm, into the chaos, into the tension. He says, grow a little bit. What are you going to do? And we know the story, right? They, they fail miserably. They're like, well, we've got five loaves of two fish. And he says, okay, let me show you what I meant. And he prays and he feeds everybody. But he calls them into the storm and, and he acts like a rain jacket, right? He's got the love and support. says, you can do this. And they don't. But he says, that's okay. Let me show you. The disciples are in a boat. And a storm comes up. And all of a sudden they see Jesus walking on the water. And Peter goes, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to get out of the boat. And instead of Jesus going, no, 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 stay in the boat. It's safe there. He says, come. Walk into the storm with me. And we know that Peter gets out of the boat, right? And he has a couple successful steps, and then he sees the waves, and he starts to fear, and he starts to sink. And immediately, Jesus is the rain jacket. He's right there. Right? He says, hey, why'd you doubt? And he's in the safety net. But he calls them into the storm. He doesn't let them stay on the boat. We see this throughout Scripture. God is a God who calls people to live faithfully in the midst of storms. He calls into the lion's den. 
He calls us into the furnace. He calls us to appear before the king uninvited. He calls us to leave our homeland and go to a place I will show you. He calls us to build an ark. When everyone calls you a fool, our God is a God that calls us into the storms. Why? Because he knows that it's through the storms that we grow. It's through the storms that I have an opportunity to live by faith in a way that I could never live if I'm always safe and comfortable and warm. And so the question is, are we families that encourage each other to live by faith? That discern the storms of life and go, you know what, I think this might be a storm that God is calling us into. And so instead of being afraid and doing the safe thing, I'm going to encourage you to trust God and run, go, walk into the furnace, trust, live by faith, and I'm going to be here to be by your side when you do it. To walk into storms as a family, to trust God more than the fear, and to not buy into the lie that if we try hard enough, we can protect each other from every storm in life. <clears throat> Are you a family of fear or faith? And the, the powerful thing about this is that if, if we as families are living by fear, we become a church family that lives by fear. That we, we are afraid of our world. And we stop following as a church God's call into storms. And we not only cripple our own family members and our immediate families, but we cripple each other as a church family. Where I no longer encourage you as my brother or sister to walk faithfully into a storm. And you no longer push me, and we no longer as a church family have our eyes and ears seeing the horizon of where God might be calling us to go into a storm. Instead, we get focused on how do we make this place more comfortable for me? How do we make this place safer for me? And we lose our mission. We not only lose our mission as our immediate families, we lose our mission as our church. This is critical. If we want to be an awesome family as a church, we've got to do the same thing. We've got to be willing to encourage each other to walk faithfully into storms. Because when we do that, then I can be a rain jacket for you. And you can be a rain jacket for me. And all of a sudden, our church family starts moving and has a heart for the lost and is willing to face down immense challenges because we're living by faith and not fear. But it starts with us being willing to encourage growth, to push each other, and to, to see life differently. In, in high school, um, every year we would go down to Mexico to build a house on a mission trip, kind of like we do here. And there was one year, we, we'd go down to San Felipe, it's about three hours south of the border. Um, so it's, it's not a short trek. Um, there was one year we were headed back up, we had already built the house, the week was over. And um, the highway that we take was getting repaved. And so we had to drive on this like dirt road for miles on the side of this highway to get back up. And you know, it was Mexico, so it wasn't very well kept. And it was really rough road. And about an hour outside of San Felipe, um, we hit some rebar in this road. And it was just the, one in a million shot, this rebar popped up and punctured 
our transmission fluid pan on the bottom of the car. Um, and we're in a 15 passenger van, right? And we got like four cars. And so you can't go very far without transmission. Um, so we had to pull over and we, we are literally like, you, it's a scene out of a movie. We, we are in the middle of nowhere. Desert road, nobody around. It's July, so it's like 110. And we're going, shoot. <laughs> what, like, let's start hitchhiking, let's start walking, like, what, what do we do? And, and my dad was a youth minister, and so he, um, the other element to this story, um, there was a protest scheduled that day at the border. And it was gonna start at five o'clock in the evening. And uh, this protest was gonna be so big that they were gonna shut the border down at five o'clock because this protest was just gonna derail everything. And so we, we had to get to the border before five o'clock or else we were shot. Like we, we were gonna have to spend the night in Mexico or figure something else out. And so we, we, we're stuck on the side of the road. We're going, oh man, this might get ugly real quick. So my dad basically shoved as many of us as he could into the other three good cars. And he said, okay, you guys just make a break for the border. Try and get across before the protest, okay. And there were about five of us that couldn't fit in those three cars, and so we had to stay behind. And so it was me and a couple other students and our youth intern and my dad. And so they all drive off into the sunset, leaving us, and it was, you know, we're like, okay. We're sitting in a van that doesn't run, and uh, it, it was kind of like, oh, what do we do? And we were able to call the minister that we had been working with back in San Felipe, and we're like, could you bring us some stuff to like kind of limp us up? And so, he, you know, we're an outside of, out, hour outside of San Felipe. So he comes up an hour later with some stuff. We patched the hole, we put more fluid in. We're like, okay, maybe we can limp to the border. If we hurry, like, we might be able to get across. So we, we take off, right? And as we're going, um, our youth intern, turns to my dad and he says, hey, I'm sorry. I mean, I was like, what? Like, it's okay, like you weren't driving, it's not your fault, like you had nothing to do with this. And he's like, no, 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 it's totally my fault. It's like, I, I prayed for adventure before we came down here. You know? so I prayed for an opportunity to grow my faith and, and God answered. And, you know, me and my two friends in the back were like, what the heck, like, no! You're know, like smacking him in the head. So my dad goes, that's awesome. Like, that's exactly what we should be expecting on a mission trip, right? To grow in our trust and faith in God. And so it was kind of a funny thing, but looking back and I'm going, I don't know if, I don't know if he was wrong, right? I mean, I think he might have been right. God answered his prayer. We got back up to the board. We didn't get there in time. Long story short, um, the patch we made didn't hold. Go figure. Um, <laughs> And so we basically um, didn't get there in time. We were stuck in Mexicali for uh, like four hours. So they opened it back up at like nine o'clock or whatever. Um, we were able to get across, but then we couldn't go any further because the van was really dead then. And so we barely got into a dealership in Calexico. They didn't have the parts. So then we're like, okay, shoot. So we rented a car. My dad had to stay in Calexico because the dealership was ordering this part and it was gonna come in like in two days or the next day. and So he was gonna to have to stay in a hotel there and the, the four of us went up. <laughs> it took us like, I don't know, 22, 23 hours to get home from San Felipe, which should have been like a six hour drive. That is one of the most memorable trips I've ever taken. And in that moment, as a high school kid, I was watching my dad and the intern, right, to see their reaction. Because my dad could have easily gone, this is horrible, we're never coming back to Mexico. This, like, if I can't control everything, if I don't, if I don't have every detail lined up, then this trip is nixed. But instead, what I saw my dad do, what I saw 
the youth intern do is is walk faithfully through that unexpected storm. And it instilled in me, they don't they didn't even know, but I was watching closely and it instilled in me this idea of, oh yeah, when things go wrong, I don't have to act like the world acts. I've got I've got a father who is able to take care of it. And so I can enjoy the storm because I've got a rain jacket. And it instilled in our youth group this idea of, wow, there is a God who is bigger than we know and, and he actually really does love us and he's going to take care of us and so we can walk into some storms sometime and it's going to be okay. We can live by faith. We can be people of faith. But it starts in our families. Are you parenting out of fear or out of faith? Trusting that God's really the one raising your kids and you're just getting to be a part of it. Or are you living by fear or faith in your marriage? Realizing that God's the one really holding it together and you're just getting to be the beneficiary of it. Are you living by fear or faith with your parents? Realizing that one day they will pass away, but it's okay because God's got them. And so you just get to be a part of it. Are we as a church family living by fear or faith? Realizing that, you know, one day Hilltop may close its doors. And that's okay because the kingdom of God is growing here. And he's the one orchestrating it, so we just get to be a part of it. Is your life characterized by fear or faith? Are you encouraging your family to go into the storms that God might be calling us into? Because when we become a family that is characterized by faith and not fear, then we enable each other to walk through storms, to see God move in miraculous ways, and to see the kingdom of heaven grow, and to be a part of it. And so let's be families of faith. Let's be a church family that is characterized by faith and not fear. Awesome. Thanks, Brendan.